The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Mr. Carousel, starring Jimmy Durante. Jeanette MacDonald is your hostess. <laughs> More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Prayer is a simple thing. A simple act of lifting our minds and hearts to God. A simple word of thanks, an act of love. With these convictions about prayer, Family Theatre comes to you each week. It comes with the knowledge that family prayer can give us the most powerful help to keep our families together. That's why Family Theatre is dedicated to your family, to all families. Your letters during the past two years have given us great encouragement. It's encouraging to know that listening to Family Theatre has become a habit. We sincerely hope that praying together, praying as a family, has also become a habit with you. When you gather your family together, when you make daily prayer a family practice, you'll know the joy and happiness of, of God's wonderful blessings. Jeanette MacDonald returns following this family theater story, Mr. Carousel, starring Jimmy Durante. Brooklyn is famous for a number of things. A tree that grew there, a baseball team, a bridge, and 2,800,000 proud and highly volatile citizens. This is the story of one of them, James Delahanty Clayton, and a memorable moment in his life. It's a nice balmy evening on Willow Street. And James Delahanty Clayton sits on his front porch, as usual, tinkering with a new music box when he has a visitor. Good evening, Mr. Carousel. Well, good evening, Marianne. Come on up here on the porch. I got a new tune for you. Just got through putting together a new music box. Oh, gee, a new song. No, sweetheart, an old, old one. In fact, my mother sang it to me when I was just a weak tot, like yourself. Now we'll wind it up and see how you like it. There it goes. Gin a body, meet a body, coming through the rye. Gin a body, kiss a body, meet a body, cry. Every lassie has her laddie, name they say had I. Yet all the lads, they smile on me when coming through the rye. Gee. Don't you mean rye crisp? I well, don't understand the words. Well, if you meet somebody coming down the street, you smile at them and say, good morning or good afternoon. Just like we say to our teacher at school? That's it. Like, for instance, when I shows up at Carnegie Hall, I says, good morning, Mr. Beam. That's the doorman. Or, good morning, Mr. Upton. He's the manager of the hall. And they say, good morning, Mr. Clayton. Don't they say, good morning, Mr. Carousel? I only allow my special friends like you to call me Mr. Carousel. You're not going to forget about your promise. My promise? Yes, about taking me to the rehearsal with you tomorrow. Oh, yes. Why, of course. Are you going to sing and play your music box at Carnegie Hall, Mr. Carousel? Well, not exactly. Tomorrow my performance is along other lines. I'm assisting the world-famous singer, Mr. Enrico Orlando. Now, uh, don't you think it's about time for you to be running home and getting a good night's rest? Then you can be bright and fresh tomorrow when I introduce you to my very good friend, Mr. Enrico Orlando. Good morning, Mr. Bean. Good uh, morning, James. Good morning, Mr. Mack. Good morning, James. Mr. Upton wants to see you in the auditorium. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Uh, good morning, Mr. Upton. Looks like we'll have colossal weather for the opening night. Yeah, should be a sellout. Oh, 
The accompanist is on the stage waiting for you. That's fine. And Clayton, remember, I want that piano tuned right this time. Orlando complained about it yesterday. Leave it to me, Mr. Upton. I'll make that piano sound like a harp from heaven. Don't extend yourself. Just make it sound like a piano in Carnegie Hall. And be quick about it. The rehearsal starts in an hour. Indubitably, Mr. Upton. Indubitably. And when my friend Mr. Carousel arrives at Carnegie Hall, they all say, Good morning, Mr. Clayton. Good morning, Mr. Clayton. That's Mr. Clayton. You know, the Mr. Clayton. All right, Clayton. Stop taking me and get that piano tune. Right away, Miss Dupton. That's what I call a sour character. Someday, they'll evaporate him into a vinegar jar. <laughs> that does it. This baby sounds like a harp. Well, my good friend, Mr. Clay. Oh, hello, Mr. Orlando. I see you've been attuning the piano. How's she sound now? I was just saying to myself, this here piano is now in tune with the angels. <laughs> and why not? Has she not have the touch of Jimmy Clayton, the best piano tuner in all America? Couldn't do less for the best singer in Brooklyn and the USA. <laughs> this is what you call a mutual admiration society, eh? <laughs> <laughs> As they say at Saratoga, it's paramutual. <laughs> I think that is very funny, you know? <laughs> a couple of more months in America, and you'll have yourself a fine Brooklyn accent. Well, got to give this piano the final check. The Clayton Carousel. Yep. This here instrument gets the Clayton seal of approval. She's primed like a thoroughbred, rare and the go. Just the like of me. It's what they say, uh, parry mutual, huh, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jimmy, me, lad. Uh, there's a lady at the stage door. She wants to see you. A lady? To see me? <laughs> yes, Mr. Carousel. That's who you are, ain't you? <laughs> None of your lip, Beam. Just send her in. She's a very special friend. Uh, yes, Mr. Car uh, Mr. Clayton. I see you have the eyes for the ladies, eh, Jimmy? This is a special one. She's nine years old and bright as a new nickel. Oh. Say, uh, Mr. Orlando, I want you to meet her. It will be a pleasure. I told her what pals we were, you know. So I thought maybe you'd... Uh... Oh, sure, I understand perfectly. You leave it all to your friend Orlando. <laughs> Say, look at that house, packed to the rafters. What a night. This Orlando sure can pack him in. Sure can. Well, looks like the show is getting on the road. Ladies and gentlemen, we take great pleasure in presenting Mr. Enrico Orlando of the La Scala Opera Company. Mr. Orlando will offer for his first selection the flower song from Bizet's immortal opera, Carmen. Mr. Orlando. This is terrible. Am I hearing right? It can't be. Miss Dopton, have you seen my tuning kit around? From the sound of that piano, I'd say it's straddling an entire octave. Clayton... Get out there, get that tuning kit of yours from inside that piano. And when you come back, keep walking until you get outside. And don't ever set foot inside again. You're fired! That up. How uppity can you get? It's guys like him that drives guys like me to commit mayhem. Or even patricide. If his name was Pat... Don't ever set foot inside here again, he said. Why, I wouldn't even put my big toe in the door or my protruding proboscis. The nerve of him, firing me when my back was turned. Mr. Carousel! Oh, Mr. Carousel! Mary Ann, what are you doing out so late? You should be in bed. Oh, I just 
had to see you. I wanted to find out about, you know what, was it real good? Was what real good? Your opening night. Oh, that. Sweetheart, there's never been nothing like it in show business. Oh, oh, gee, I'm glad. Did they clap real loud? Tore down the house. That's what they did. Tore down the house. If I ask my mommy, do you think I can come and see you on the stage? Well, Mary Ann, I got to thinking tonight that I'm getting a little tired of them command performances. I figured I'd get me a new kind of job. You mean give up your music? Oh, that would be awful, Mr. Carousel. Well, not exactly. Well, what would you do? Uh, be an impresario. Yeah, that's it. I always wanted to be an impresario. Well, what does an, an, an impresario do, Mr. Carousel? Well, he, uh, he, like Mr. Upton, puts on big shows, gets important people to sing and act. My friend's been after me for years to be an impresario. After all, there ain't a big name in the music world that don't know the work of James Delahanty Clayton. Oh, golly, Mr. Carousel. Then maybe you'll bring them all to Willow Street and they'll sing for us, huh? Might do that someday. Now, uh, don't you think you'd better be running along home? Oh, won't you play just one more little song in your music box, please? Lady, when you look at me like that, what can I say? Why, Mary Ann and Mr. Roberts. This is an early morning surprise. How are you, Mr. Clayton? Fine, fine. Come in. Nothing wrong, I hope. No, no, nothing's wrong. Have a seat. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clayton, for the past many months, we've heard nothing but Mr. Carousel from our daughter here, Mary Ann. Oh, she's a queen. That's what she is. My greatest audience. Well, Mr. Clayton... I've come to ask you a great favor. Anything, Mr. Roberts. That is, uh, within my humble sphere of influence. Well, I've been appointed chairman of the Willow Street Committee for the new medical clinic. That's just what Willow Street needs, a nice, clean hospital. Yes, sir. And the committee has decided that a benefit of some sort would help raise the necessary funds. And I told Daddy that you were going to be an Emperor Scario and that all sorts of people were going to sing and act for you. Yeah? I mean, uh, well... The truth is, Mr. Roberts, that I... And I told Daddy and Mommy that everybody knows you, just everybody, and that you said you'd bring them to Willow Street to sing for us. Well, I don't think I... that I could bring them to Willow Street. That well, is... Mr. Clayton, if you can get the talent, I'm sure we'll have no trouble finding a place to present the benefit. Oh, gee, Mr. Carousel. Oh, gosh, won't that be fun? And, and you being the Emperor Scario and everything. Well... I asked for it. Uh, Willow Street will never forget this, Mr. Clayton. That's what I'm afraid of. That's what I'm afraid of. Hey, say there, James Delahanty Clayton. And where do you think you're going, my fine friend? You can't come in here. Out of my way, Bean. Got a lot of things on my mind. Got a lot of work to do. Now, hold on. So you got things to do, have you? Well, according to the Flatbush Gazette, it's not piano tuning that's keeping you busy. It says here, James Delahanty Clayton has turned impresario. Bean, standing there, you look like a cigar store Indian without his toupee. Now step aside, I've got no time for your society gossip. It says, the rise of impresario Clayton is one of the greatest success stories of this great land of ours. For only last week... He was tuning pianos at Carnegie Hall. Let me see that paper. I was framed. And before you was framed, you was fired. Who said I was fired? I quit. You was fired. And Mr. Upton said to arrange for you not to re-enter these sacred portals ever. Well, I got news for you, Timothy Big Mouth Beam. That's just where I'm going to put these two feet of mine. Right inside these scarce portals. And should a certain Mr. Upton provoke me further, I shall be forced to plant one of them right where he'll... Uh, be most inconvenienced. Ouch! No, 
Now get out and stay out, Mr. Impresario. Howdy, Mary Ann. Oh, gee, it's real wonderful and everything. I told my teacher about the concert, and she said it was real wonderful and, and everything. Sit down here, Mary Ann. I want to talk to you. You don't act like you're feeling very good, Mr. Carousel. Well, I'm not, Mary Ann. You see, I did something that was wrong. Y you did? And you see, when a person doesn't tell the truth or pretends to be what he ain't, he gets punished for it. That's what my daddy always says. And so, that's why I'm not feeling so good. I know what. Let's you and me play a happy song, Mr. Carousel. Then maybe you'll feel better, huh? No, Mary Ann. The only way I'll feel better is to tell you the truth. You see, I was always pretending I was a big man over at the hall. But do you know what I really was? Sure, I know. You were a, um, a whatchamacallit? Um, um, an Emperor Scario. No, sweetie. I was the piano tuner. You... you mean like Mr. Godowski at the school? Well, not in the same class. After all, tuning pianos at Carnegie Hall is a little different. Oh, who am I fooling? Yep, it's the same thing. But I thought you played the piano for Mr. Orlando. No, no, Mary Ann. I only tuned the piano for him. Oh. And after what happened the other night, I won't be doing that anymore. You mean Mr. Orlando is mad at you? I've got an idea they're all mad at me over at the hall. Why, I can't even get in a place to see anyone. Oh, gee whiz. Oh, golly, what'll we do now? I'm gonna have to tell your daddy and mommy tonight that there ain't gonna be any concert. I could tell them if you want me to. Bless you, honey. But I'll tell them. Say, where are you going? Oh, I just remembered. I got some things to do. Bye, Mr. Carousel. <laughs> Mr. Orlando will see you. Go right in. And so you see, Mr. Orlando, it's just real important. Darling, believe me, nothing would give me more pleasure to sing for your friends on Willow Street, but I have a concert in Boston. But, but you could sing there some other night, couldn't you? But, sweetheart, I have signed a contract. You know, I have... Uh, given my promise and my word, and uh, thousands of people will be disappointed. But couldn't you tell them about your friend, Mr. Carousel? I'm sorry, Bambino, but it's impossible. I'm sure my friend Jimmy, he will understand. Well, goodbye, Mr. Orlando, and thanks anyway. Goodbye, Carissima. And I promise one day Enrico Orlando sings just for you alone. Goodbye. Hello? Yeah, this is Mr. Clayton. What's that? You want your piano tuned? Did you try Mr. Kodatsky on Bay Street? He's not home? I see. Okay, okay, I'll help you out. What's the address? 6800 Willow Street. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there right away. Bye. Now I know how Officer Flannery must have felt when he transferred him from Times Square to the Bronx. I got to call the tune of piano here. Uh, eh? You're, uh, Mr. Clayton? Yeah, yeah, that's me. Now, where's the piano? Come this way. Go right in. They're waiting for you. Wait a minute. Why, the joint's jammed. Hello, Mr. Carousel. Mary Ann. Clayton. We thought you'd never get here. And Mr. Roberts, what is this? It's the Willow Street Clinic benefit. But someone wanted a piano tune. I did. Mr. Orlando. And I refuse to go on until it is a tune by none other than my friend Jimmy. Keep talking. I'm still in a fog. Oh, there is no time to talk. People are waiting to hear Enrico Orlando sing. But 
I thought you was due to sing in Boston. I was, my friend. But a little angel who whispered in my ear about a very good friend who was very unhappy because he could not keep his promise. Tell me, did that angel look something like this little lady here? Exactly like her. But how did you get out of going to Boston? I tell the concert manager there, in my country, it is very bad not to listen when the angel, she talks. Especially when this angel, she comes from Brooklyn. And you know what this concert manager, he say? No, what? <laughs> he say, we in Boston also believe in angels, but who will sing instead of Enrique Orlando? <laughs> I tell him, I have talked with my very good friend, Arturo Hernandez. One of the great voices since the barber of Figueroa. Barber of a Seville. <laughs> that barber sure gets around. <laughs> so it is arranged that Arturo sings in Boston, and as we say here in Brooklyn, everything is a pari mutual. <laughs> Carousel. And what else? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's put the show on the road. A one, a two, a three. This is Jeanette McDonald again. You know, a home isn't just a house or four walls or a room. Home means understanding affection, and love. It takes all these to make a house a home. It means mother and father and children living, working and playing together. Yes, and praying together. Children must be taught to pray, you know, and they learn best by seeing and doing. A picture is worth 10,000 words, and the daily picture of father and mother, brothers and sisters, praying to God for the help they need will remain forever in the memory of a child. The toys of Christmas and the little family pleasures will soon be forgotten, but one memory the children will carry through life is the memory of a God-respecting, God-loving, prayerful home. I know because I come from such a home. That's why, week after week, we bring you this message. Pray together as a family. A family that prays together stays together. This is Jeanette MacDonald saying, God bless you. Our thanks to Jeanette MacDonald and Jimmy Durante, and to John Slott and Emil Frank for writing our play. Music is arranged and conducted by Max Tear. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. The cast included Norma Jean Nilsson, Alan Reed, Carlton Cadell, Ed Coleman's, and Fred Howard. Next week, our Family Theater star will be Maureen O'Sullivan in Violets for Courage. Your host will be Robert Ryan. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at this same time when Maureen O'Sullivan and Robert Ryan will star on Family Theater. Tony Lafrano speaking. Mutual Broadcasting System.